Okay folks, welcome back to another episode of Programming with Clayton. Today we're going to do just a little short, simple video on Boot P. So, here we have in our Logix 5000, I've assembled a program. There's actually no code in it, but I've set up my modules and everything off the last video, actually. And we're going to give this PLC for this program an IP address. So, Rockwell has a really cool little tool, utility, called Boot P Server. We'll click on the Boot P Server, and it'll pop up a screen. And actually, you can see right here, this is actually my processor coming in right now asking for an address. But let's go ahead and set up the Boot P Server first. So we'll go to Tools, Network Settings. Under the Network Settings, you need to at least set your subnet mask of your host machine. Once you get that in, then your host machine can communicate with whatever's asking for an address. If you have a gateway or going through a gateway or DNS, you need to go ahead and add that in also. I'm not. I'm just local on my host machine and my direct connect to the PLC. So I'm going to click OK. Once I click OK, I'm going to reach up here in the top. And I need to. you need to get the MAC address off your processor to begin with. Compare your MAC address here, because there could be random other things coming in on your network. You never know on some of these plants. Go ahead and find your MAC address, highlight it, click Add to Relations List. When you do that, you go ahead and just type in the IP address of what you want your, your PLC to have. So we're going to do 172.20.20.20. Host name and description, you could add it. This is my uh, Compact Logix. Um, and my description, I'll do it. It's a L32E. Click OK. Okay, now it's down here. Okay, as soon as it asks again for an IP address, you'll see it pop up here. Now, if your MAC address doesn't have the host name and the IP address beside it in this box, it hasn't assigned it yet. If it's still just down here, it's still waiting for the PLC or the device to ask for its address again. Once this happens, let's go ahead and we'll open up a command prompt. And we'll go ahead and ping that address I just give it. And there we go. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and close my command prompt. And you can actually go ahead and just close this out. You can exit out. You can save the changes if you want to. I usually don't. Let's open up Logix 5000 again. Let's go to Communications, Who Active, and let's see who's active on my network. Here we have a 1769L32E, which is the processor I'm trying to connect to. Let's go ahead and go Go Online. Okay, and it says my controller has no name and nothing else in it. So let's go ahead and download my program. So we'll select download. It'll give you a, a no guts, no glory message. Download. Okay, at this point now, you can see we're, we're online. Cogs are turning. Uh, I have a battery fault because I had to pull my battery to get my PLC to default to nothing. Uh, and let's go ahead and, and we'll click on the Ethernet port down here and we'll click Properties. We'll go under Port Configuration and right here it says Enable Boot P. If you uncheck this box, they come checked. Default from the factory, they come checked. If you uncheck that box, then it gives you the ability to add an IP address up here and a subnet mask and gateway. If you leave Boot P enabled, and you ever cycle power on your processor, it's going to lose its IP address. And if it's not set up in a plant that has a DHCP server or a boot P server running all the time, it won't get one back. You'll have to go in and configure it again. So I, first thing I do is disable the boot P, add my IP address, my subnet mask, click set. It gives you another message, danger message, yes. And OK. At that point, your IP address is hard-coded into your PLC now. You can cycle power. You can do whatever. And actually, 
even with the battery, no battery, you can cycle the power on a Compact Logic or a Control Logic's line of family processors with no problems. Uh, it'll still, it's in the uh, non volatile memory, it's not in the volatile memory, so it'll actually retain its IP address even with no battery in it for, you know, a couple of months actually. And, anyways, that's just a real quick, real quick little demo on, on Boot P and how you use it. Thanks again for joining me and come back next week. Uh, we're going to try, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use a DF1 driver to uh, configure an IP address. Thank you.